Have you ever contemplated the significance of Jesus' birth? It's a tale laced with prophecy and divine guidance. Picture the young Mary, visited by the angel Gabriel, an envoy of the heavens. With a message from Luke 1.31, 32, Gabriel declares, You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. A prophecy straight from the book of Luke, forecasting the extraordinary path this child was destined to walk. But the prophecies weren't confined to this. As foretold, Jesus took birth not in a royal palace, but in the town of Bethlehem, bringing to fruition the ancient predictions of a ruler emerging from the small Judean town. This event perfectly embodies the prophecy of Micah 5, 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. A testament to Jesus' kingly lineage as a descendant of King David. Thus, the stage was set for a birth that would rewrite the course of history. Now picture this scene. A young couple, Mary and Joseph, embarking on a journey to Bethlehem. In the book of Luke 2, 1, the Bible states, And it came to pass in those days, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus, that all the world should be taxed. This decree required every man to journey to his ancestral home for a census. For Joseph, this meant leaving his home in Nazareth, and journeying to Bethlehem, the city of his forefather David. The journey was challenging and treacherous, particularly for Mary, who was pregnant at the time. But despite the hardships, their steps were resolute. They were guided by a sense of duty and a divine prophecy yet to be fulfilled. This prophecy comes from Micah 5, 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. It was in this seemingly insignificant town that Jesus, the descendant of King David, was destined to be born. Thus, in the humblest of circumstances, in a stable, the King of Kings was born, fulfilling the prophecy and the decree. Now, who were the first to hear of this extraordinary birth? Let's delve into that. The shepherds, folk tending to their flocks under the vast night sky, were the first recipients of this celestial newsflash. An angel, radiant and resplendent, appeared before them, breaking the monotony of the silent night. The shepherds, startled, listened as the angel unfurled the divine message. The Bible in Luke 2, 8, 14 narrates this event. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. This proclamation was not made to kings or priests, but to humble shepherds. It was an indication of the inclusive nature of Jesus' message, a promise that his teachings would reach out to all, regardless of their societal status. The good news of great joy was first shared with the humblest in society, the shepherds. But what was the world like at the time of Jesus' birth, you might ask? Well, Judea, where our story unfolds, was under the heavy thumb of Roman rule, as described in Luke 3, 1. Now, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea. This was a time of great unrest, as the people grappled with the reality of foreign occupation. The Romans, known for their grand architectural projects and efficient military, also imposed a system that was less appreciated by the locals, heavy taxation. This taxation burden is mentioned in Matthew 22:17. Tell us therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? This was a burden that weighed heavily on the everyday life of the common people. To enforce this taxation, the Romans implemented a census as narrated in Luke 2, 1. And it came to pass in those days, 
that there went out decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Every citizen was required to return to their ancestral home to be counted. This is what brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, despite the imminent arrival of their child. Little did the Romans know, their census, a tool of control and taxation, would play a crucial role in the divine plan, as foretold in Micah 5. 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. The Roman census, a tool of control, unknowingly played a part in fulfilling divine prophecy. So, why does the birth of Jesus hold such profound significance? Well, it is not just about the miraculous circumstances surrounding his birth as described in Luke 2.11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. It's also about the themes of humility, providence, and prophecy fulfillment that are woven into his birth story. Jesus was born in a stable, a humble beginning, befitting the prophecy in Micah 5, 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. His birth also underscored a divine plan, a vivid instance of providence at work. It fulfilled ancient prophecies like 7.14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. This set before a life that would change the course of history. Jesus was not just another baby. He was the promised Messiah, the beacon of hope born into a world in need of salvation, as highlighted in Matthew 1.21. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. His birth laid the foundation for his teachings, teachings of love, forgiveness, and self-sacrifice. In the humble surroundings of a stable, amidst political turbulence, a life was born that would offer hope and transformation to the world.